excited and thinking about how to repair the gift of intuition. She was apparently a great expert on these creatures. And she made it very clear to me that, unlike most of her other tales, her witch stories were not imaginative. They were all true. They were the gospel truth. They were history. Everything she was telling me about witches had actually happened, and I had better believe it. What was worse, what was far, far worse, was that witches were all around me. They were still with me, and I'd better believe that, too. Are you really being truthful, Grandmama? Really and truly truthful? My darling, you won't last long in this world if you don't know how to spot a witch when you see one. But you told me that witches are like ordinary women, Grandmama. So how can I spot them? You must listen to me. You must remember everything I tell you. After that, all you can do is cross your heart Pray to heaven and hope for the best. We were in the big living room of the house in Oslo, and I was ready for bed. The curtains were never drawn in that house, and through the windows I could see huge snowflakes falling slowly onto an outside world that was as black as tar. My grandmother was tremendously old and wrinkled, with a massive, wide body smothered in grey lace. She sat there majestic in her armchair, filling every inch of it. Not even a mouse could have squeezed in beside her. I myself, just seven years old, was crouched on the floor at her feet, wearing pajamas, dressing gown, and slippers. You swear you aren't pulling my leg? You swear you aren't just pretending? Listen, I have known no less than five children who have simply vanished off the face of this earth never to be seen again. The witches took them. I still think you're just trying to frighten me. I'm trying to make sure you don't go the same way. I love you and want you to stay with me. Tell me about the children who disappeared. My grandmother was the only grandmother I ever met who smoked cigars. She lit one now. A long black cigar that smelled of burning rubber. The first child I knew who disappeared was called Ranghild Hansen. She was about eight at the time, and she was playing with her little sister on the lawn. The mother, who was baking bread in the kitchen, came outside for a breath of air. Where's Ranghild? she asked. She went away with the tall lady, the little sister said. What tall lady, the mother asked. The tall lady in white gloves. She took Ranghild by the hand and led her away. No one ever saw Ranghild again. Didn't they search for her? As they searched for miles around, everyone in the town helped, but they never found her. What happened to the other four children? They vanished just as Ranghild did. How, Grandmama? How did they vanish? In every case, a strange lady was seen outside the house just before it happened. But how did they vanish? Hands up who wants another horrific story about a child who disappears. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think we've got time for one more. Two more. All right, two more. showed some ducks in the yard outside a farmhouse. It was a very simple painting. There were no people, just a flock of ducks on a grassy farmyard and the farmhouse in the background. It was a large painting, rather pretty. Well, one day, their daughter Sorve came home from school eating an apple. She said a nice lady had given it to her on the way home. The next morning, little Sorve was not in her bed. The parents searched everywhere, but they couldn't find her. 
Then all of a sudden, the father shouted, There's Solveig, there she is, feeding the ducks. Sure enough, she was in it. She was in the painting. She was standing in the farmyard in the act of throwing bread from a basket. The father rushed up to the painting and touched her, but that didn't help. He was simply a part of the painting, just a picture painted on canvas. Did you ever see that painting, Grandmama, with the little girl in it? Many times. And the peculiar thing was that little Solveig kept changing her position in the picture. One day she would actually be inside the farmhouse, and you could see, see her face staring out of the window. And the other day she would be far over to the left, with a duck in her eye. Did you ever see her moving in the picture, Grandmama? Nobody did. Wherever she was, whether outside feeding the ducks or inside looking out of the window, she was always motionless, just a figure painted in oil. It was all very odd, very odd indeed. And what was most odd of all was that as the years went by, she kept growing older in the picture. In ten years, the small girl had become a young woman. In thirty years, she was middle-aged. Then all at once, 54 years after it all happened, she disappeared from the picture altogether. Pinch died. Who knows? Some very mysterious things go on in the the pictures. Okay, last one. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, this really is the last one. Go on, Grandmama. You told me there were five altogether. What happened to the last one? Would you like a puff on my cigar? I'm only seven, Grandmama. I don't care what age you are. You'll never catch a cold if you smoke cigars. <laughs> what about number five, Grandmama? Number five, she said, chewing the end of her cigar as though it were a delicious asparagus. Number five was rather an interesting cake. A nine-year-old boy called Leif, called Leif, was summer holidaying with his family on the fjord. And the whole family was spinning off some rocks on one of those little islands. Young Leif dived into the water, and his father, who was watching him very closely, noticed he stayed under for an unusually long period of time. When he came to the surface, he wasn't Leif anymore. What was he, Grandmama? He was a porpoise. He wasn't. He couldn't have been. He was a lovely young porpoise, and as friendly as could be. Grandmama, yes, my darling. Did he really and truly turn into a porpoise? Absolutely. I knew his mother well. She told me all about it. She told me how late the porpoise stayed with them all that afternoon, giving them rides, the brothers and sisters, rides on his back. They had a wonderful time. Then he bathed and flipped at them and swam away, never to be seen again. <laughs> but Grandmama, how did they know the porpoise was actually late? He talked to them. He laughed and joked with them the whole time he was giving them rides. But wasn't there a most tremendous fuss when all this happened? Not much. You must remember that here in Norway, we are used to that sort of thing. There are pictures everywhere. There's probably one living in our street at this very moment. It's time we went to bed, he said. A witch wouldn't come into my bedroom in the night, would she? No. A witch will never do silly things like climbing up drain pipes or breaking into people's houses. You'll be quite safe in your bed. Come along. I'll talk to you later. Call him Rolf, they call him Rua. And Rua was no